Hello and welcome everybody, Gage here from Sharp Knife Shop. Excited to have you with me for a sharpening tutorial slash uh, sharpen along video. So uh, the purpose of today's video is to get you sharpening your knives. Um, you've probably watched a lot of sharpening tutorials, uh, but I always find it's easiest to learn by doing uh, and by uh, doing with someone who knows what they are doing, which in this case is me today. So uh, grab your stones, get yourself set up. Um, I'm gonna sharpen a knife. You're going to sharpen your knife along with me. I'm gonna give you some points, uh, some tips and tricks and, and just go through the whole process with you. Uh, and you can just follow along with me in real time. And I hope that this serves you well and hel uh, helps to get you sharpening your knives and get you the results you're looking for. So uh, our setup, up looks like this. We've got a, an Ikea uh, plastic tote with our stainless steel sink bridge over top of that and our Naniwa stone holder. This is a very luxurious setup. You don't need all this stuff, but it certainly is nice to have. We also have a flattening tool. This is super important. Keep our stones flat. If today we're going to focus on maintaining the angle at which we are sharpening, then having a flat stone is going to be super important for that because if our stone is all dished out, then it's going to be difficult to maintain a flat or consistent angle. We're also also going to move through a progression of four stones today. Now again, you don't need to go through four stones, um, but we're going to assume that your knife is super dull. Um, and if it is in fact super dull, you're going to need a coarse grit stone. Uh, in our case today, we're using a 320 grit stone from Suahiro. Um, the 320 grit or coarse grit stone in your progression is going to quickly remove material from your knife, help you to reshape your edge. Uh, but off of this stone, you're going to get sort of a toothy, a jag it almost like serrated feeling edge. So we're going to move through a progression of finer and finer stones. Uh, next in our progression will be the 700, then we'll move to a 1000 and we'll finish off on the Suhiro Rika 5000. Very similar to when you're sanding a piece of wood, if you jump too high or, or too far in your progression, um, the finer grit stone that you're jumping to will be unable to remove the scratch pattern from the lower grit you just came off of. So it's important to make small incremental jumps rather than going from a 320 all the way up to a 5000 for instance. So. Uh, you'll notice I have all my stones soaking in water. This is important because we want to form what's called a slurry during the sharpening process. Uh, and if our stones aren't soaked properly, water is just going to suck right into our stone and we'll never be able to form that slurry. The slurry is a mixture of the stone and the uh, material coming off your, your knife, mixing together, creating almost what can be thought of as like a liquid abrasive. And that's going to be really helpful to the sharpening process. So uh, we want to uh, help to sort of build that through our sharpening and we don't want to be continually pumping water on our stone, which is going to wash away all the material that would build our slurry. Okay, so uh, next th uh, thing we need to think about is how we're going to grip our knife and how we're going to find our angle. Assuming you are holding your knife correctly, which would mean you are finding the balance point of your knife, you're placing your thumb on the opposing side and you're wrapping the rest of your fingers around the knife like so, our sharpening grip is going to look pretty much the same. We're going to uh, change it slightly though by extending our index finger onto the spine of the knife and then placing our thumb onto the heel of the knife like so. Uh, our right wrist and arm are staying largely locked in place. We're, we're not applying any pressure down with this arm. Uh, we're simply moving the knife forward and backwards this way and moving it uh, down the length of the edge of the knife like so and keeping our wrist as locked in place as possible, maintaining our angle. All of the hand pressure is going to come from your left hand and specifically I like to use my index finger and middle finger. We want to apply pressure as close to the edge of the knife as possible. In today's episode, we are working on sharpening the, the cutting edge of our knife. So if we were to put our fingers up here, close to the shinogi line, that's gonna force the knife down onto the stone, and that's going to change our angle and, and cause us to sharpen the side of our blade rather than the actual sh cutting edge of our knife. So um, do be careful though, this stone is going to remove steel from our knife, so it will remove skin from your fingers, uh, and uh, uh, you don't want to uh, cause a bloody mess on your stones. So just be a little aware of what you're doing there. Now, uh, to find our angle, you, there's many different methods that you can use. I personally find uh, that imagining straight up and down on the stone is 90 degrees. Half of that is 45. Half of that is 22 and a half. And because we're working with a nice Japanese uh, uh, steel here, we can go a little bit flatter to the stone at around 15 degrees. Um, now, the, another easy way to tell um, if you're sharpening at an appropriate angle is to set up a camera and film yourself and compare yourself to other sharpeners on the internet. And that'll give you a really good idea of 
whether or not your sharpening angle is correct. Um, anywhere between totally flat to the stone and somewhere around here is going to work just fine though. So um, general sort of a rule of thumb here is that the flatter to the stone you are, uh, the sharper your edge will feel, but the more um, delicate your edge will be. And the more aggressively you sharpen, the stronger your edge will be, but the less sharp it's going to feel. So, so uh, somewhere, somewhere you know, in between is, is what you're looking for. Before we get sharpening though, we always want to, again, make sure our stone is flat. So I'm gonna just take two seconds here to flatten my stone out. You probably noticed there that I, uh, I scraped off the edges as well. Very important to do that because they will kind of get a little sharp um, as you flatten your stone and you don't want to uh, cause any uh, big ruts in your knife. So uh, we know what angle we're going to sharpen at. We know um, where our pressure is coming from, what our right hand and what our left hand are doing. So we're gonna start closest to us on the stone here and we're gonna apply pressure as we push the knife away from ourselves. It's gonna look like this. You'll notice I'm taking my knife right off of the stone and coming back to the starting position. When you're first learning to sharpen, this is the definitely the way to go. As we improve though, and we want to increase our efficiency a little bit, we're going to keep our knife and our stone in contact with one another. The danger of do using this method when you're first learning though is that you run the risk of uh, accidentally changing your angle or applying pressure as you're coming back to the starting position and digging your knife into the stone. So when I'm using this motion, I'm applying pressure as I'm pushing away and I've released all pressure as I'm coming back to the starting position. The only reason we do this is it uh, cuts down on the time, right? makes me much more efficient and faster. So this is the motion you eventually wanna to get to, but when you're first learning, just really take your time. Make sure you're focusing on getting consistent angle when you're sharpening. Cool. So after, after a few strokes, you wanna just take a, take a break and check your work. What we're looking for here is a nice, crispy, clean sharpening line. We don't want to see any uh, cloudy bits or scratch marks coming up the side of our knife. What we want to see is a nice, consistently uh, sh formed sharpening line. So if I see that it's really skinny in one part or really fat in one part, um, at the part where it's most fat means I'm a little bit flat to the stone. If it's really skinny, it means um, I'm a little bit angled up too much. So that nice consistent line is what we're, what we're looking for and I'm pretty happy with what I've got going here so far. The other thing we're checking for is what's called the burr. The burr is going to present itself as a sort of thin lip of steel that forms on the back side of the blade that we are sharpening. So uh, if we start off with our knife like so, uh, a dull knife rounded off edge, and we're removing material from our knife, eventually we're going to start to push material over the opposite edge that we are sharpening. So if I'm sharpening this side of my knife, which is face down into the stone, I'm going to feel the burr form on the side that's faced up at me. So this, the, the opposite side. And again, it's going to present itself as like a scratchy lip of steel, and I wanna make sure that it's consistent all the way from the tip to the heel. You don't wanna work one specific part of your knife too, too much. You wanna you want to work the, the whole edge of your knife consistently. So if you're feeling like there's no burr in one part and there's, a, and there's a burr forming in another part, try not to focus too, too much of your attention on one specific part of the knife. Of course, you will have to put in a couple extra strokes um, in a certain part of your knife if it's just not coming along, but um, you definitely wanna stay away from just spending like five minutes sharpening just the tip of your knife because you will affect the profile or the, the curvature of your blade. So you wanna to try to work the blade as evenly as possible until that burr feels consistent all the way from tip to heel. It's also really important not to move on before you you form that burr properly. So I want you to continue working on this one, that this first side of your blade, get that burr formed properly before you move over and do the other side. So I'm feeling pretty good about things right now. Um, 
Um, I would say that I need a little bit of work up here and there's a spot sort of like right around here that I don't feel as much of a burr as I would like to. So I'm gonna just do a little bit more work here. I wish I could tell you exactly how many passes this is going to take or like how many strokes you're gonna have to do, but it all depends on, on the knife, the, the coarseness of the stone you're working with, uh, a number of different things. Um, if you're having a tough time feeling the burr, it's always good to feel the opposite, both sides of the knife. One side should feel smooth, so the side that you are sharpening should feel smooth and the opposite side should feel scratchy. If you're not feeling that scratchiness, just keep working away. On these low grit stones, your, uh, your hand pressure should be quite aggressive as well. Assuming your knife is quite dull, it's gonna take a lot of steel removal to get your knife sharp again. So that will likely take some time if it's been a long time since you've first sharpened your knife. I'm feeling really good about things. I've got a nice crispy clean sharpening line uh, here. It looks consistent all the way from tip to heel and my burr feels really consistent as well. It feels the same sort of like, my, I don't know what the word I wanna use here, but it feels the same. It feels the same all the way from the tip to the heel, so I'm feeling good. Keep in mind, the more aggressive your burr is, means the more steel you've removed from your knife, so our goal in sharpening is always to get our knife sharp while removing the least amount of material possible. So we don't wanna feel like a super, super aggressive burr. If you're seeing threads of steel come off of your knife when you switch over to do the other side, you've probably created too aggressive a burr and you're removing a lot of material, um, but not a huge deal. Your knife will get sharp. You'll just have less knife than what you started with, which is not great always. Cool, so um, again, I'm feeling good. So now I'm gonna flip over to do the other side of my knife. Cool, so if our grip on our front side is like this, it's gonna change slightly when we move over to the other side. So we're gonna keep the knife in our right hand, we're just gonna flip it over. Our thumbs now are gonna go onto the spine of the knife, our index finger onto the heel, and the rest of our fingers just wrapped over top. Again, we wanna keep our fingers as close to the edge of the knife as possible. Um, nothing is gonna change here in terms of our hand pressure and our angle and all that sort of stuff, but one thing is gonna change. Instead of starting closest to us on the stone and applying pressure as we push away, we're gonna start furthest away from us on the stone and we're gonna apply pressure as we pull the knife towards ourselves. Just like so. And I forgot to flatten my stone, it's feeling a little wonky here, so I'm gonna take two seconds to flatten out. So again, when you're first learning, Come right off of the stone and return to the starting position. This will keep you from digging into your stone and ruining your edge and ruining your stone. But as we improve, we're gonna try to keep our knife and our stone in contact with one another. Remember, we're applying pressure as we pull the knife towards us and releasing pressure as we move back to the starting position. Checking my work here, checking to see how my burr is coming along and looking at visual cues as well to see uh, if I'm doing a good job here. So try to keep your handle as dry and as clean as possible through this. So again, I'm looking for that nice clean sharpening line. I don't wanna see any sort of fat bits or skinny bits It should look the same width the whole way. And assuming you're going for a 50-50 bevel on your knife, or I should say 50-50 edge ratio on your knife, you want your edge to look the same width on this back side as, as it does on the front side. So generally speaking, your burr is gonna form much quicker on the back side of your knife because it's already formed and we've kind of just pushed it over to the other side here. So you, I don't know if you can see in the camera here, but my edge on this side is looking a little skinnier than it does on this side.
So that to me means I just need to do a little bit more work on this backside before I move on to the third and final step. So you notice when, like when I'm sharpening, typically what I do is I think of the knife in sort of five or more sections, depending on how large it is. I'll put in a few strokes in each of those five sections as I'm working down the length of the knife. I typically work from tip or from heel to tip and, I, and then all the way back uh, from, from tip to heel. And then I'll put in some long strokes just to sort of even out all of my work here. I'm also trying to really take my time. I, I, sharpening the speed is not important at all when you're sharpening your knife, um, like how fast you're moving the knife across the stone. So really just take your time, uh, make sure you're getting good quality strokes in. Uh, quantity does not matter. If all your strokes are garbage that you're putting in, then you're not gonna get great results. So really take your time. So I'm feeling good. I've got a nice uh, edge on this uh, on the backside here. Uh, everything's pretty well evened out here. They look about the same width on both sides. So I know I'm ready to move on to my third and final step, which is to deburr my knife. Having a flattening tool is super important. I think a lot of people, especially when they come in for our sharpening class, uh, at the shop, they're always surprised to see how much we're flattening the stones or how much we're, we're getting them to flatten the stones. Um, it, it's gonna happen pretty quick, especially on your low grit stones, they're, they're generally gonna wear pretty quickly and um, having a, a wonky stone is not gonna make things easy for you. So um, it's always easier to maintain a flat stone than it is to flatten a wonky stone. So just take a little bit of time every once in a while, flatten things out, especially when we're doing our deburring is very important to have a flat stone. So uh, we finished off of our, our knife sharpening this way. So now what we're gonna do is flip the knife back over to the original side that we started on. And we're gonna start putting in long strokes all the way from tip to heel. And at this point, and only during the deburring process, do we flip the knife over between every stroke that we make. So um, what it's gonna look like is I want you to think about your tip of your knife starting on the uh, bottom right corner of your stone. And I want the heel of your knife to end up at the top right corner of your stone should look like this. We're gonna stay right where we are. We're gonna flip the knife over. We're gonna do a little shimmy over so that our tip is on the top right corner. And I want your heel to end up at this bottom right corner as you come through. So it's gonna look like this, just like so. And now we just put the two of them together. Your hand pressure at the first few strokes should be about the same as what you've been doing. But as we go through this process, we want, to, we want our hand pressure to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Really take your time with this. Consistent angle, lightening up on your hand pressure, getting good contact over the whole length of the edge. All those things are super, super important. Going fast is not, so just really take your time. You can use audible cues as well so if it should sound nice and consistent every stroke should sound about the same and now checking our work what we're checking for here is that there are no burrs remaining on either side of the knife so we're going to feel i like to use my my index and middle finger i like to use my thumb feeling all over and I'm not feeling any burr. I wanna now just touch the edge of my knife. If it can kind of like grab into that, into your skin a little bit, then chances are it's sharp. If you feel uncomfortable doing this, you can always use the nail trick where you just push the, the knife into your nail. If it skates across, if it slides across your nail, you're not super sharp, but if it gets stuck into your nail like this, then you're feeling good. You wanna check every part of your knife. 
It's really important to make sure that you've set a good foundation on this lower grit stone before you move on to the next grit because you're not gonna really be able to make any changes on the higher grit stone. So this low grit stone, really important to get things where they need to be. Uh, this is can be thought of as like if you're if you're painting a picture, this is the this is the outline of your picture, and then your next your next uh, stones are just sort of coloring in the lines and shading your uh, your picture. So if you don't uh, if you don't have your picture uh, uh, the lines made properly, then you're gonna have a tough time coloring it in. So next stone is our our 320 grit stone, or our, or I should say our 700 grit stone. So here we are on our 700 grit stone, ready to go. Everything remains the same here. The only thing that slightly changes in your, is your hand pressure, just a little bit. Um, you still want to be applying a good amount of pressure at this point, but it should be a, a slightly lighter than on your 320 grit stone. But we're uh, doing the same three steps. So we're forming the burr by sharpening the front side of our knife, flipping over only once that burr feels nice uh, to do the back side, and then removing the burr through our deburring process. So. The burr at this point though is gonna feel much less aggressive. That's a good thing. We're trying to sort of refine our edge, right? So we don't want our burr to feel quite as pronounced as it did. You also find typically that the burr on uh, on as you as you move through your progression will pop up quite a bit quicker than it did on that first stone you used. So again, that 320 grit stone, assuming your knife is really dull, is really sort of setting the foundation for your sharpening. So it, generally it's gonna take a little while to get that burr formed on that first stone. And then once you've done that, um, life gets a little bit easier through through your progression. So already I feel like I have a nice burr formed on this. It feels nice and consistent all the way from tip to heel. When I look at my edge, it looks nice and consistent. There's no fat spots, there's no real skinny spots or anything, so I'm feeling good. A little bit of work on the heel here still. Yeah, cool. So, ready to move on. So I'm going to, again, I'm sharpening this way right now. I'm gonna flip the knife over. Thumbs go on the spine. Knife goes furthest away from me as I pull it in towards myself while applying pressure down into the stone. Releasing that pressure as I return to the starting position. If you guys have any questions about the process as we're kind of going through here, make sure to leave some comments down below. We'll make sure to answer all your questions. But at this point, it's gonna get a little repetitive. We're basically, like I said, moving through those same three steps that we did on our core stone through the rest of our progression, following all the sort of tips and guidelines that I've given you. So always checking your work, making sure your edge looks consistent the whole way, making sure your burrs are formed properly. Lightening up a little bit on our hand pressure as we go through our progression. And always making sure to deburr. So I'm feeling good about my, my burr on this side of the knife now. It feels perfect all the way from tip to heel. So I'm getting ready to deburr. I would say deburring is one of the more important parts of the sharpening process, something that gets overlooked, I think, with, from a lot of people. So a lot of people will sharpen both sides of their of their knife, but they won't go through the deburring process. And this is really gonna 
help you get really great results. So making first and foremost, making sure you form the burr correctly on both sides of the knife and then making sure you deburr it as well is gonna make a huge difference. Deburring I'm really taking my time with obviously, just making sure I get good consistent strokes in. And now checking my work, feeling no burrs on either side and it's feeling very sharp. As you move through your progression, your knife should start to feel sharper and sharper and sharper. Sharper. Cool. So we're done on our 700. We're gonna move on to our 1000. All right, here we are in our 1000 grit stone. Some fresh water on there, flatten our stone out. Flattening your stone uh, helps to sort of create a bit of a slurry as well. So that's a little trick if you find, especially on your higher grit stones that you're having trouble getting that burr formed, uh, take a break, give your stone a little flatten, get a slurry going, and I think you'll find that that really helps move things along a little quicker. So again, starting right over from the, uh, from the beginning, uh, forming our burr on side A. We don't really have much more to add at this point. You're really just, again, following the same three steps that we started with. Hand pressure is basically the same that we were using on our 700 grit stone, maybe a touch lighter. Feeling for our burr, checking our edge. This is uh, this is also why it's really helpful to move through um, a progression of more stones at smaller increments because you'll have to spend less time on each stone and it will actually really help to speed up the sharpening process and really help you get the best results possible. If you we, we could have made the jump from the 320 up to the 1000, but I'd have to spend far more time on the 1000 getting those scratch marks worked out from that previous stone. Um, and what can happen is you might get a little frustrated with how long it's taking and you might not do as thorough a job as as you should. And that's going to affect your sharpening results. So um, I'm feeling good about this. The burst is really forming nicely, but I've got a little bit more work to do here. So I'm just going to carry on. Yeah, everything's feeling great. Got a nice burr form. So I'm gonna flip over, do the other side, and flatten my stone real quick in between though. Other, another little tip, I, I try to use the full length of my stone or as much of it as possible. This is gonna help your stone do the work for you rather than you doing all the work. You will have to do some sort of smaller, smaller strokes as well though, of course. But try when you can to use as much of the stone as possible. Okay, things are feeling good. So uh, I've, I've formed the burr on side A, I've formed the burr on side B, now I'm gonna do my deburring strokes.
Oh yeah, baby. We're feeling great. Nice and sharp. We've still got one stone to go. I'm feeling really happy with where things are. Now, there is debate around whether or not you should go higher or lower on your grit. Where should you stop? Now, we at the shop find that uh, on like a stainless steel knife, generally speaking, like coming off your 1000 grit stone and then hitting it on a strop is really all that you need to do to get really good results. Um, I can uh, generally, if I've done a good job, shave my arm hairs with my knife after a 1000 grit and a little little hit on the strop. So um, don't feel like you need to go super, super high. You will definitely feel a benefit especially on your higher quality steels. Like this is HAP, this guy's made from HAP 40, which is considered a semi stainless tool steel. On your carbon steels, you'll notice a benefit from going up to the higher grits as well. But you can still get great results uh, on, a, on a 1000 grit, provided you are using proper technique. But for the purposes of this video, we are gonna go up to a 5000 grit stone and see what that does for us. Again, all the steps remain the same. So I've got a bit of a bit of a uh, slurry built up here through the through the uh, flattening. I'm gonna get a little more water on there. And at this point, my hand pressure again is lightened up a touch. And we're going through the same three steps again. I got that nice slurry starting to form here, which is really going to help things out. The burr on your on your higher grit stones, like three thousand and above, is going to be difficult to 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 feel if you're new to sharpening but it will still be there. It's gonna be very faint, which is a good thing. Cool, feeling good. Flip over to the other side. Almost there. You don't want to rush through your, your, your highest grit stone. I'm definitely guilty of this when I'm sharpening my own knives. By the time I get to this 5,000 grit, I'm just ready to be done. But really take your time, make sure you're doing a good job. Don't cut any corners at this point or else you won't be able to cut any corners with your knife. I'll see myself at. <laughs> Once I'm finished. That's why Wendy's patties are square. <laughs> Corners. Deburring now. Off of your last grit stone, deburring is super important. Really want to take our time at this point. Make sure we're getting really good, consistent contact. Hand pressure at this point is like zero. I'm trying to use as little pressure as possible. Cool. Let's see how we did here. So checking my edge looks really nice. It's the same width the whole way. 
It looks about the same on both sides of the knife and our edge is feeling very, very sharp. Now, you could be done at this point and I think we'd, we'd be, we're at shave and sharpness level here. Maybe, yeah, we're shaving. It's really dry, so don't mind my dry skin. But yeah, we're shaving sharp at this point, but we can get even sharper. So to do that, we're gonna use our, our leather strop here. So if you're unfamiliar with the leather strop, it is just a piece of leather attached to a piece of wood generally. You can get like the belt straps that uh, have um, little rings on both sides so you can attach it to like a peg in, in something. That's typically how like the, uh, the barbers back in the day used to do it with their uh, straight razor uh, um, um, stropping before they shave your face. Um, and I don't know the exact science, maybe there's someone in the comments that does know the exact science that's happening here, but moving from a ceramic material to the, uh, to the leather material really seems to make a difference. Um, I've been told that the stropping process helps to remove any sort of micro burrs or little, little pieces of steel that might be uh, hanging onto your knife here. Um, and it really does just make uh, your knife like even sharper. So we're gonna essentially be doing our deburring process on our strop here, just doing long strokes. You can go from tip to heel, you can go from heel to tip, really doesn't matter. And you'll notice my strop is completely naked that I'm using here. You can load up the, uh, the suede side with some, some green polishing compound or some diamond polishing compound. But I've always found that this fine side, just naked, gives me great results. And you can be pretty forceful when you're doing your stropping. And we're feeling insanely sharp now. This feels awesome. Hairs are just popping right off my arm. Cool, so there you have it guys. This knife feels awesome. Big takeaways from today's, uh, from today's sharpening class are, uh, take your time, speed is not important. Uh, quality of strokes over quantity of strokes is always uh, more important. Um, following those three steps is really important, forming the burr on side A and only moving, uh, flipping over to do the other side uh, once you form that burr properly. And then deburring is super important as well, making sure you get good contact as you're, as you're moving through your deburring process and uh, really setting a good foundation with your lower grit stones before you move on to the next stone in your progression. I hope this video uh, helped you get the sharpening results that you were looking for. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, subscribe to our channel for more knife related content. Until the next one, stay sharp.